This is called Stone On. It's a song from Stephen Cogswell. Get it at otfy.com. That's A-W-T-F-Y dot com slash stone. Oh, goddamn! <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh, yeah! Nevada. We are live and direct all in the same studio. Hello, you beautiful people. It's Brian live right here with my BFF and OAK. It's J-R-Y. Wait, you're not OAK. You're BFF and LAS. I was. I was. This morning. OAK. This then you morning. hopped on, a, I believe it's called a private jet. I and mean, it, yeah, some of us a are. A lady, a lady never tells. <laughs> some of us are not getting valet parking and instead are sitting in the blue lot at the introductory rate of ten dollars a day and some of us maybe two-thirds of our panel by the way hello andrew main are here by way of private fucking jet yeah i'm justin robert young by the way <laughs> co-host of the night attack program <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm getting to the real shit right here we got we got beef you and me <laughs> you got halfway into the intro and then flew off the handle with rage <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, uh, both Andrew and I flew on a service called Jet Suite. Is it, uh, okay, so is it now we did a segment on hacking the system about like unused inventory where it's like a rich person pays $20,000 to get you to Las Vegas, but now they got to get back to <laughs> Des Moines or whatever. So if you're in Las sure. Vegas, you can hop on for 500 bucks. Is it one of those things or, or is it as illustrious as it sounds? So we are looking at, if you're watching the video version, you're seeing the website now, which makes me want to punch myself. Oh but... no, wait, why? <laughs> <laughs> this shit looks so super dope. Uh, it is. <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, God damn it. So, uh, yeah, they're basically like, uh, uh, private jets that are, are not like there to rent, although they hail themselves like air as, taxi, but you know, basically. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's like a, just a, a regional airline except with private jets instead of smaller. This is going to be a really interesting Patreon plug this time. I'm just saying <laughs> it was actually literally now was, more than ever, yeah. now more than ever. <laughs> the, 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 the two cheapest options to get out here. Cause we came out on late notice, by the way, the reason why we're out here is because we attended the uh, celebration of life yep. of Johnny Thompson, one of the most, uh, revered magicians. Uh, Hells yeah! By the way, uh, we did not feel equipped or qualified to talk about uh, the passing of Johnny Thompson a few episodes ago. We do now. Yeah, we, we took the course. <laughs> we did. We have, now we understand the 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 thunderclap of 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 absent talent from this world. Now it's we amazing. Got, we got we got certified in uh, uh, Johnny Thompson grief. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we we took the three hour course, uh, and uh, we are now here for you. Uh, yeah. So you guys. Now, why did both of you like? Like, did you guys secretly like? Yeah, what you know? What Brian Brian's on Southwest Airlines. You know what Brian doesn't know about? He's probably parking in the blue lot <laughs> like, for like, ten dollars a day. Like so many uh, of of my conversations with Andrew, it began with, "Hmm, how might we smite Brian?" <laughs> uh, no, to be honest, like on last uh, last minute travel, uh, obviously all the prices for tickets go up and everything. Right. But something like. Jet Suite, at least out of Oakland, was fairly cheap. There's literally the two cheapest ways uh, for me to get here were Spirit Airlines. Oh boy. At a $60 round trip ticket. 
that's the devil's bargain, of course. <laughs> like, that's the first of three sixes. <laughs> and the next one is like, would you like a seatbelt? That will be six dollars more. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, in the fine print, good sir, you did not see the exhale tax, <laughs> and we doc did uh, see, but uh, four hundred <laughs> exhales at a dollar fifty a piece. Uh, we will be taking a pound of flesh, and they literally carve your arm. <laughs> and they're like, that's the final six ounces. We did you a favor, sir. Six, so, of six, course, six, six. Uh, eschewing the yoke of uh, Spirit Airlines, which only serves to uh, stamp down the proletariat, right. I took the working man's airline. <laughs> the working man's yeah, airline. Sweet X. Uh, so, yeah, it was actually fairly cheap to get uh, uh, here and back, and it rules. Like $60 cheap? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, part of the way, part of the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, not totally, no, 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 but basically, yeah. So, uh, okay, so you guys did Jet Suite. Uh, what was was it as good? Like, I re recommend or do not recommend? Oh, it rules. Yeah, like, I definitely. They 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 say on the website, they're like, hey, be there thirty minutes before. Your, your flight. flight takes off. God damn it! No TSA. Yeah. Yeah. No TSA. See, You've been no TSA. You know, we, we've had that argument about like security at the airports. I'm like, we can always fly private, not have to deal with it. This is that, Brian. Yeah. This is this is that. Your constitutional rights are still in and place. So, and so I, I thought I was going to be a real naughty boy and show up right at 30 minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Guess who was the point Dexter getting his fucking folder slapped out of his hands while all the cool kids showed up fucking 10 minutes before <laughs> the flight was about to take off. Literally walked to the gate, said, suh, and they go, suh. And they're like, all right, let's make sure you're not a terrorist. And they took uh, my bag. And the lady said, oh, I'm going to have to swipe your bag. And I thought she was being facetious, like, oh, I'm going to need to take your, take bag, your bag. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah Away yeah. from yeah, yeah, away you're from like, me. swipe or no swiping. Uh, <laughs> and she goes, uh, I'm like, uh, uh, okay. And I'm like, taking it off. And she goes, <laughs> on, on your body? No, on the bag. Oh, oh on the bag, on, on the your bag. body. Uh, and I'm like. Uh, and she, I'm like, oh, do you need that? She's like, no, I'm swiping it. Yes. And then I'm like, oh, I thought. She said, what? And I go, she said, I was what? gonna. What did you <laughs> think? What did you think? I mean, so we, we do we do this little Abbott and Costello routine of like, I thought you were gonna swipe it. She's like, I did, I did swipe it. I just swiped it. I said, no, not swipe. I meant swipe. Uh, so oh, okay, so 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 you rolled up. I, I swear to God, I'm in the blue lot. It's like seven <laughs> miles lot. from the fucking terminal. Right. I should never. I'm only gonna do valet forever and ever and ever. Right, right. By, by right. You can't rent self-esteem, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, also, this airport is ten minutes away from my apartment. Yeah, mine's ten minutes. That was like I just. Uh, All right, like, so, look, so I, I, I don't I, have to cross. Okay, in you, fact, I probably saved okay, hold, money hold, hold, compared hold, hold, to a hold regular on. United to, to, to put it in perspective, like I happened because I had to go get the the, the Zoom thingy so that we would be able to broadcast tonight. Uh, I had to go by HQ, and I was like, oh, I finally get to find out how far the Austin airport is from from uh, HQ. So I actually did a stopwatch thing. And it turns out it's 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 20 minutes. So fuck you and fuck you. Minutes. Fuck both of you. 20 I minutes. Could, I could have gone to the airport and be like, oh, I forgot my sandwich. God, exactly. <laughs> oh my I could have got halfway yeah. and then told the Uber, uh, uh, please, uh, good sir. Oh, wait, is that please? a blimpies? Let me go in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go down to the Dunkin' Donuts and grab myself a tall, well, light I mean, and sweet. But you would be stupid because they had free donuts and Starbucks. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Put oh, 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 also, also. Uh, and this is a rookie mistake. I will not be repeating this. I shan't be repeating this mistake as I go back. Uh, free unlimited drinks. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Fuck. Uh, <clears throat> I left the stopwatch going, and I got to the airport at 19 minutes, 30 seconds. I thought, that's great. HQ is less than 20 minutes away from the airport. I'll take this blue thing because they have an introductory rate, and I'm going to yeah. try to be the proletariat. Uh, and, so, and so I get there. It's seven fucking miles, and I swear to God, by the time I got to clear where civilization exists, uh, uh, it was 28 minutes. Like, it took, it took 18 minutes for me to wait. It took almost as long to get from the fucking blue lot with yeah. their $10 introductory rate yeah. to get to, uh, it's fine, it's fine. About, blue balls. About the length like of your, your flight, really. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, because I just got on it and it was like a up and down. 
Everyone then, wears AirPods. Then, that's actually like yeah. that's like they, they they check your pockets for AirPods before you get on. Then I, then you then you I got on. on my Southwest Airlines. I set up near the front. Oh, look at me! I'm near the front. Oh, I'll get drink service fast. You're like, oh yeah. Well, what's your drink? Oh, I'd like a drink. Oh, great. And it was like it was a little, little wait. Then they come back and then it's like a uh, oh you're here for the drink. You're like no, we're here for shitty Ritz crackers. And it's like okay, fine, fine. And then the drinks come right, and then they're waiting, waiting, waiting. There's a fucking hour, and then meanwhile the new fucking Hearthstone uh, just dropped, and I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm having a I'm having to buy my own shitty ass Wi-Fi for eight fucking dollars uh, uh, because I'm not uh, a a plus premium or whatever the fuck. Um, so as they bring the charcuterie plate back, yeah. uh, uh, I make a selection. Is it more to tell, or am I gonna do prosciutto? The guy next to me <laughs> had a free drink coupon. He oh. let me use it because <laughs> he felt pity for me. <laughs> so, I like to imagine that it's an old Western uh, character. He's like, well, strangers, he puts his arm around <laughs> totally you. Totally You look like the kind of man who parked in the blue line. <laughs> it really was. It was that fucking moment. And then I, 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 I go, oh. <clears throat> anyway, um. Johnny Thompson, man. What a oh, legend. Oh, geez. Yeah. Well, th there is a reason why we did scramble our plans all, yeah. all to be here, and that was to be there for the celebration yeah. of life. I, I, I think it's Johnny fair Thompson. to say that that none of us knew for sure why it was an automatic slam dunk for us to do it. Or, or, or I, I don't know. Like, like um, when, when the invite came out, it's like, well, we got to do this, right? And I remember, like, J Justin, when I reached out to you, you're like, yeah, in that perfect tone of voice that conveys – uh, the answer is, of course, yes, because this seems to be important to you. I'm not entirely sure why I'm doing it, but the answer is yes. And then, and then, well, and also, literally, I'm going back uh, to like in five days or something. No, no, uh, Andrew's actually. Yeah, I Johnny had done a lot of stuff for me. Johnny had yeah. been very helpful to me, and 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 when I found out it was today, I'm like. I'm coming to Vegas on Thursday, you know, and I have Today to be is back Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, for those who only listen via audio. So yeah. Andrew is flying back tomorrow, so he can come back tomorrow's tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> but that's who Johnny was. I mean, Johnny was, you know, look up Johnny Thompson. Johnny is an amazing person. When I I first came out to Vegas 20 years ago, I came to work with Penn and Teller, and Johnny took me out to lunch one day in his big Cadillac and told me stories and gave me some sage, sage advice. Don't borrow money from the mob. Okay? <laughs> I swear to God, he told me that advice. And then years later, when I had my own TV show, Johnny came out to L.A. and helped me out, worked with me, helped you know create magic for me. It was just super, super helpful for me. And then you know, one of the things that we thought realized the memorial service was or the celebration of life is Johnny had time for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Johnny made time for everybody. And, and, and that specifically, I think we touched on that a, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, where it's like my my brief experiences were I, I met him when he was working on uh, the first time I met him was when he was working on Mind Freak. Uh, and we met again a couple of times uh, at Fool Us. And uh, whether it was true or not, he did a good enough job of simulating having remembered me from the brief time we met before. Um, and but but he was 100 percent present and genuinely just wanted me to be better as a performer in that brief, brief interaction. Well, we all wanted you to be better as a performer. I, I, I know. It's, it's a recurring <laughs> theme. <laughs> but but, but you, uh, uh, everybody felt it, and that was one of the most powerful things about the remembrance tonight was, was uh, in some ways, everybody was singing the same well, song. You could, like, yeah. Johnny's a guy that, like, you could call Johnny or talk to Johnny on the phone about advice, and Johnny could have literally just walked out of Penn & Teller's theater helping them with a bit, right? and then he'd pick up a phone for a nobody. And give you advice. Yep. And 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 yeah. And, and just to give context to to folks who don't get this magic can oftentimes be, you know, there's there's the phrase I think Andrew and I love the, the, the smaller the pie, the sharper the knives. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> that's that's sometimes magic can get like mm -hmm. that. And specifically, when people get to the top of the mountain, uh, they want to show the, the pelts that they have won to get up there. Uh, status and ego can entrench. Uh, uh, folks, and they deserve it because they've they've gotten up there. Johnny betrayed none of that, uh, uh, at least that I knew. And that's really the the thing that was amazing for me is you know twelve years ago in two thousand and seven, Andrew and I came up with the idea for eye tricks, and I basically went out on a journey to chronicle magic, to chronicle the magic industry with no prior experience and no prior knowledge of it. And for a kid <laughs> writing in a sweaty warehouse. 
in Margate. You had air conditioning eventually. <laughs> eventually, <laughs> eventually. It was never not sweaty, <laughs> even when the air conditioning was going. Conspiracy theory. Go back and reconstruct that studio from the Weird Things videos back in those days. <laughs> yeah, watch the glisten. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there, uh, you know, I, I kind of have come to describe it as I knew, I knew who Johnny Thompson was because everybody talked about Johnny Thompson, and more specifically, everybody gave Johnny Thompson credit. And at the top of the magic industry, that's something that doesn't happen automatically. You do, Not every magic advisor gets credited as, oh, they came up with this, they worked out all the methods, they did all, all, all this. When you are doing stuff on TV, it very much becomes, oh no, he's the magician. But between like the theatrics and then even the credit inside the industry, the, the person that's performing it gets the lion's share of what they were doing, except for Johnny. Right. And that's something that for me, like the way I've come to describe it is like, that was what happened. That's the news I got on Mars. Right. I'm on Mars. I'm not here in the center of things. Earth is Las Vegas. Yeah. Earth is Los Angeles. I'm covering stuff, talking to random people that I talk about. And I know about this man's reputation. And then I got to come to Earth and learn about it from the people for whom uh, he was. What was that most. like at a visceral level? Because I, I like, again, you know, for me, it was an automatic, like knee jerk, like, well, I, we, we, we have to. Right. And then we got there. Uh, now that you kind of saw firsthand, because my goodness, the who's who of who was there when we're casually. Um, uh, also, I didn't know that, that I looked so much like Chris Kenner. Uh, I, uh, that's a, uh, that was a, that was a very inside, strange moment. That's some inside sauce. That's fine. Totally correct. hundred <laughs> uh, percent. Uh, somebody said that they mistook me for Chris Kenner and I was like, what? Uh, okay. And then I ran into Chris Kenner. I was like, oh yeah, no, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. look a lot alike. Yeah. There was but, like, there was like one moment where Brian just wanted to start doing like the mirror, like left hand goes <laughs> and right hand goes. Well, part of it, part of it is the hairstyle of being dressed, and, and both of us have in the suit. In the, yeah, suit, the suit is what yeah. really makes. Oh, and it's like Rob Corddry glasses, in yes. you know, that put in between the three. Yes, of you. Yeah. Well, and, and so I, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I, well, I totally that's, recognized that's, yeah. uh, uh, Chris before I recognized David Copperfield. <laughs> like, like both of them were together, but I'm like, hey, Chris. I was like, oh, hey, David. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was. So, yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, Penn, it was in the Penn and Teller Theater. Penn and Teller Theater. Copperfield, uh, and then uh, it a was, ton it, of names that... Okay, so so a lot of those names that you didn't recognize, I definitely recognized from the early from my early days in Magic uh, when it was bootleg VHS tapes of television appearances. Yeah. Uh, uh, like like seeing... Or as we like to call VHS tapes of television appearances. <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> well, well, no, no, no. But, but I mean, um, uh, uh, pre-YouTube. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hard for most of our listeners to, to tree. remember it those times. It was tape tricky. Yeah. And uh, uh, but like seeing that's the first time I saw Fielding West live on stage. Yeah, uh, I think it's the first time I saw Mike Caveney on stage. Uh, 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 Todd Robbins. Uh, I'm hoping that he's downstairs hanging out after we wrap this up, because I, I only met him once in my entire life. And he was such an inspiration for my entire stage he had show. An amazing story. He was great. Right. Yeah. And 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 um, uh, it was really precious to hear the familiar themes that kept coming out. The entire time, uh, and and uh, man, emotions ran hot. And that's, hot. That's the thing is that he was obviously such a calm, cool, and collected, or like no, he not not, <laughs> not not calm, cool, and collected. He was such a he was such a character, yes. and he was always above it all. Like like he always had the line. He was he was that kind of like old school performer. And by the way, this is a celebration that went from literal phrase that was mentioned. So he's opening for Shecky Green uh, <laughs> and then ended with uh, what I'm going to assume is either a 13 or 14 year old crying about how her magic teacher has just died. Right. Like this is the, the career that that man had at, at, at the level that he had it at. Uh, but everybody wanted to be in that vein. They always wanted to have the story. They wanted to have it on point they wanted to have it have the moment and the line and then that was the greatest tribute was that it wasn't just a bunch of weepy people talking about their lost friends it were they were performers performing for a performance idol so here's the part that i loved the most and and part of it is because um you know we're far enough along in our journey of, of broadcasting and podcasting and youtube and all that stuff that that we're no longer children and and part of us is fearing 
like, well, is this it? Is this what I've done? Is this my dent in the universe? Fucking you take all those stories you heard. Almost all of them were in the last 20 or 30 years of his life, which yeah. means you and I have a long way to go before <laughs> any of our most interesting shit even shows up on the record. Yeah. Like, like they, 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 they pass the fact that, that he's like, oh, yeah, also he was a, a lead harmonicist in a harmonica band. And uh, it's like, I'm sorry. Harmonica. Uh, go back. Go back. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. that, that was a perfectly fine thing to do. And then you did that thing. And then that could be who you were. But instead, it's a fucking footnote. And and the fact that that he spent his, uh, his the last twenty or thirty years uh, uh, playing playing genuine support for so many people it just has me so and, jazzed and, about getting old and being uh, and still performing and yes. still performing yeah. you know still performing uh, yeah. and and being I mean like there were stories before he he died that you know were being told just amongst our our, our friend circle like the 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 uh, the uh, stories from fool us and like. Fights he got into with Penn on the set and stuff like that that we've heard from from Matt Donnelly. Like it, it's, man, uh, it was it was. I, I don't know if I was ever going to expect something less than a very emotional experience, but it was more than I thought, and and it was, I don't know. Oh hey, th there is one thing that that uh, is publicly posted that I bet Bryce could find that I thought was really good, and it was unlike everything else. So a bunch of people brought stories to tell, and I believe, I, not that it's a contest, but I do believe Teller won, because he brought Johnny Thompson appearing in his zombie short films. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, was amazing. I, was I Teller? Uh, 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 there was two. Uh, uh, there was the initial one, and then the follow-up one, uh, he and and Pam play. Ann Teller. Uh, Ann Teller. Oh, that's Ann right. Teller. Ann Teller. That's it. Ann Teller. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, so great. And this was this was definitely this is in the iTricks wheelhouse. Uh, uh, but there were two short films that he did, uh, and the second one had featured prominently Johnny Thompson and his wife Pam, and just that but that sense of humor, like the, the the delivery on some of those lines were just insane. Uh, yeah, it's it's very good. Hopefully, we'll find it before the show ends. But the uh, it's also <laughs> on prominent display is his uh, 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 both at the remembrance. Everybody was ripping on uh, the hairpiece that he wore. Yeah. Uh, but but on prominent display was his uh, male pattern baldness head in this short video, which I thought was amazing. Uh, man, it was just it's great. It's like uh, there are, there's very good reasons this human being is so well beloved by all the humans that make up magic, but more importantly, by magic itself. And uh, it, I'm so pleased that we dropped everything to come out here and be part of this. This was really cool. Uh, yeah, and and there's a, a couple ways that people can, if you are a magic fan and you want to support. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, we'll, 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 we'll find a way that we can put out information. I don't know. Like, sure. you know, the only way that they gave to the support right now was... Uh, somebody's email address. Oh, we it, which we don't want to necessarily publicly. give that out. Yeah, but yeah. but but uh, uh, in lieu of flowers or whatever, like um, we were talking about this afterwards. Uh, they're like, hey, uh, I know you might want to do flowers or donations. Here's where we want all money and joy to go to, uh, and it's it's basically for the uh, uh, the kids at the Magic there's, Castle. There's, right? Yeah, there's a Magic, Magic Castle, Castle has a juniors, juniors program. They're going to do a Johnny Thompson scholarship for that. So, dude, I would love for us to all muscle up and make sure that that is yeah. Really I well performed for funded. the Juniors program. I did a lecture for them a month ago, or two months ago. What, so, so, yeah. and, and for well, those who are uh, unfamiliar, what is that like? So what they do is that part of the goal of the so the Magic Castle in L.A. Look it up. Um, but there's the Academy of Magical Arts is actually the group that operates it. One of the things they're trying to do is you want as a club, the organization is trying to promote the art of magic. And one of the ways they promote the art of magic is they bring in young people who can come in and take classes. You know, they show up like every Saturday for like several months or a period of time. And they continue through the program and learn the skills of magic from some of the best teachers in the world. Um, and it's, you know, a fantastic program. It's produced. You look at a lot of the people who, you know, have come out of there and, you know, uh, our buddy Rico De La Vega was working yep. magic, you know, Justin Willman, who's on Netflix. And I mean, just the, the people who've been involved and in, around that program are amazing. So anyway, I had the, I had the, they invited me to come in and talk about illusion design. So I had a blast. I brought in all my, you know, big props and stuff and showed yeah. them how to make stuff. And, you know, it's just, it's just a really neat program that can help teach kids the art of magic craft. We 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 will find a way for people to yeah, to, yeah. to support it uh, within the next yeah uh, this will this so. this will be an ongoing thing yeah. uh, but uh, suffice to say um, 
uh, very, very surprising. I, I, how could it be surprisingly emotional? That's what we signed up you for. You know, I, I think I mean, that you're, you can go to a memorial where everybody likes somebody and they go up there like him and some people tear up and they do this. Everybody here loved him and felt loved by him to see many people who everybody had, like I said, it wasn't just, oh, I went to go see a show and I loved him. Oh, I met him and he was cool. It was like, I lived in his house for three days or I yeah. spent this time. He came, you know, we, we, we would call, talk to each other on the phone. All, he, was, he was out there and he was for people and he spent time with people. The real relationships he had, they were very real. Well, and, and, and you know, uh, uh, Jeff McBride, in his bit, uh, his takeaway was that uh, something very special that, that he did was without guile, without irony, would tell everybody – um, not uh, not indiscriminately, but like like wrapping up a phone call. It's like I love you, yeah. and uh, and um, that might not feel like much at the time, but it was genuine. And uh, and he encouraged everybody to like, hey, say it because you don't always get to say it. And um, uh, I mean, as my friends, you guys, I don't know. I'm 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 pretty huggy and mm -hmm. without guile or irony. I love everybody, and uh, it made me feel really good about that habit. And I real like like hoping that I get forty or fifty more years of saying that to everybody. Like I, that was really impactful to me. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, look, you you don't have the theater that full with the diversity of voices that he had. Again, I, I really can't put into words how wild it is to see people that are in wheelchairs and people that are in high school on the same stage speaking as passionately about the same man, their friend, you know? Yeah. About their friend. I mean, that was, yeah, it was about their friend. Yeah. yeah. And if the, if the background, it was the Penn and Teller put this on in their theater at the Rio. So they did there and it, we had, you know, uh, it was just uh, so many people were there. And, and that was things so you had, you know, James Randy, who we've known for years right. and, you know, yeah. he's been a mentor and, you know, and I knew, I knew Johnny Thompson through Randy and that friendship goes way back. And Randy gave a very, very touching talk about, you know, oh my God! Yeah. Uh, the one moment that really struck me is, and I bet they can find the clip, is Arsenio Hall yeah. losing his shit, like in the moment, like um, being derelict in his duties as a talk show host because all he wants to do is gush about Johnny Thompson when he's so a surprise guest. It was, it was, it on was there. a clip from Arsenio had had a run on Celebrity Apprentice, I think, the same season that Penn did. Yeah, it's the more recent version of mm -hmm. the Arsenio of, of, show. Of the Arsenio Hall show. So it's not the one in the 90s. It's, right. it's, it's the, the reboot mm -hmm. that happened because he had the, the buzz coming off The Apprentice. And Penn is performing on one of the shows. And boom, there comes out Johnny Thompson. And he, <laughs> like, free, like, it's like a kid seeing Santa Claus. Yes. Like, he absolutely loses his shit and starts talking about how he used to take the train down and feels the need to perform at a mall. Explain to the audience the context and why they should be as excited as he is. And and you could tell like the audience is like, we get it. You like this guy. He does magic. And then and Arsenio was like, no, you don't understand. It's yeah. amazing. And then, and then Arsenio <laughs> talked about how then Johnny taught me how to do this, this act with a dove and told me to get a tux and do this. He was a kid. He was just some kid out of nowhere, and that's who Johnny Thompson. Was. You like magic? Then I will tell you. You know, I hope you. I mean, that was, that's that, and then that's what I said. It's like he's a, you could be a nobody like me, and he'll take you out to lunch and he'd tell you stories, and then he'd go finish and go and in, walk into the theater and David Copperfield and talk to him about magic, yeah. and and you you felt you were treated the same, and you know when he you know you spent time with him and he'd do that you know I love you pal, and it just made you feel funny, and then you see him again and he'd remember you or make you felt remembered and yeah. very yeah. Uh, so so good. Although, although i did love there was a great uh michael carbonaro submitted a, a video <laughs> thing where uh he was talking about arguing with johnny thompson about <laughs> methods and uh, carbonaro would say like oh I, I got this method it's better and johnny thompson would give him this uh like oh okay well you know Mine worked for Lance, and uh, mine Been worked there. for Copperfield. I've had that. I've had that conversation, with Johnny. <laughs> and Penn yeah, and Teller. You actually, you I had that. I, I, on, I, on trust, I right? had. Yeah, Johnny was. Johnny helped me. Helped me work on the pilot. And Johnny, I had those. I like help this. Well, you know, I'm like I want to do it this way. Well, there's this. You know. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, Bryce, uh, did did you find uh, the? Oh, yeah, there it is. There so it is. is. Uh, so we're looking at the uh, the YouTube video of. Uh, oh my God. Um, the uh, uh, portraying. Uh, oh, so this is Ann Teller three. So this is I. I, I even forget because I, I. I only remember two, uh, myself. But this is, actually, can we play this? Can we get the audio on this? 
Believe it or not, I was a Vegas headliner. Back in the good old days when the mob ran the joint, not these walking corpses. But now that I think about it, not much has changed. I'm here with my wife, Pam. 50 years ago, she was a piece of ass. <laughs> so was I. Now I'm bald and I have two artificial knees and emphysema. She's got bad ankles and that dog, Pearl. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not dead, just looks it. We're not too That's far it. behind. Anyway, we came here shortly after everything started. Place was abandoned, we made it home. It took a bit of work, but I enjoyed it. I like to stay active and keep my mind occupied. The food isn't what it used to be, but Pam's doing the best she can with what we've got. We don't receive many guests out this way, but every now and then we get a visitor. It's nice to have company, and Pam just loves being hospitable. Our door is Our always open to us. Yes, she made a zombie into yeah. a shed. <laughs> and then they're, they're, they're putting him in there for, for, a, for a captive audience. Yeah. Uh oh, hot damn, man! Yeah, uh, and, and that's and it's also it's like and it's pointed out is uh, Johnny and Pam. You know, Pam, his wife, she's still with us, and the pair of them. And it's just, I can't even imagine oh, what God. she's going through. It's no, just, yeah, you know, the two of them together watching that couple. You, you look at that and you go, I want to be like that. You know? Yeah, and, uh, and well, the I good mean, news is the the, the 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 performances they had, and then also we got some of the the banter between the two of them, <laughs> which was like. Just legendary. Like talk about like like relationship goals. Like like yeah. some of the, the the back and forth lines between the two of them. Just amazing. Uh yeah. No. I, I guess those aren't our stories to tell outside of to say uh, uh uh hot damn. That was great. It was so great to get a peek and to learn more about why somebody is so obviously so, so well beloved. Penn, Penn and Teller are starting a website. And if you want to find out more about this guy, and this is what this is for, it's TomSony.co. Um, I don't know what's up there now, but people are going to start sharing their stories about this. And he's, it doesn't matter if you've had no interest in magic or whatever, but if you have any interest in just what it is like to be a charismatic person who shares and creates and collaborates, it's worth learning about this guy. Yeah, I mean, look, the, 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 this, this celebration of life included a, vis a video testimonial of the Big Bang Theory creator, Bill Brady, Brady. who has done, he's probably the mm -hmm. biggest dude in television right now in terms of ratings and success, who talks about how he is one of the most succinct writers that you could ever want. And he uses bits from Tom Sony's act to show young writers what mm. concise like character story. Oh, yeah. The, the example he cites is just it's a great, yeah. great example. And it's worth watching. You can, you can find Tom's act there. But I mean, yeah, it's just uh, so well thought through, you know, uh, man, there's really no. Uh, uh, Non awkward way to segue into and to give us money. <laughs> how about this? Hey, Speaking of emotional support, <laughs> let's talk about how problematic it is that some of us, one third, ladies and gentlemen, did you know that one third of the cast tonight did not fly on a private jet out to <laughs> Las Vegas? And you can help. In the arms of an <laughs> The blue $10 sounds like it's $10 cheap. <laughs> Shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Walk. Keep moving. <laughs> Listen, one one out of every three night attack hosts has to go through TSA clear pre. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the other two mind. don't not even mind. have to do that. <laughs> Kindness of a cowboy <laughs> to give up a dream ticket. <laughs> One out of every three night attack hosts has to buy their own drinks and hope somebody has a coupon for him. <laughs> Sorry, sir, this is invalid. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can make an impact. <laughs> Your donation of $1 an episode at patreon.com slash night attack will make magic happen, but more importantly, if you are a new patron or you raise your pledge, you have a chance to randomly be selected for... Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Night Attack new Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour. Oh my gosh, I have such exciting news. Oh, Jesus Christ, Brian, yeah, what? Yeah, you know what I love even more than new pledgers? Whoa, what? Definitely People... not the blue lot, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> 
People who raise their pledge. Oh, what? raise the pledge. Yes. Uh, like enough that I could stay at the blue lot for a day. <laughs> oh, wait. That's not what we have. Oh, this well, is you know, Justin, oh, one of the oh, things. That, no. this, is, this is why I was in the blue lot. Well, blue oh, lot. this was a lowering of Brian, the pledge. Brian, were you scared of the blue lot? Were you scared? Look, I mean, I was I heard a guy got stabbed in the blue lot. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. I heard that somebody got beaten to death in the blue oh, lot. Oh, my God. Yeah. Guys, Ooh, I'm yeah. parked yeah. in the blue lot. What? I have to go there fact, again. By the way, that's what they call it. They call it the black and blue lot yeah, because exactly. you're going to get beaten yeah. up so Well, you know, when you're an internet personality... It's kind of dangerous because you know a lot of people don't like you. But, but I'll yeah. be I'll be safe because Texas has all those blue laws, no, right? No, 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 they, no, no, no. You think it was that, but it's called no. the blue man lot, yeah. not as in the delightful mm. tricksters oh. that play out here in Vegas, oh. but that you're gonna get choked to death and you're gonna turn physically yeah. blue. Yeah. But, but but how am I going to how am I going to be able to afford to stay anywhere but the blue well, lot? When somebody drops their pledge. Wait, really? We're just going to shame <laughs> them? I mean, I, 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 I'm feeling it out. I'm the feeling shame it out. Patreon. <laughs> yeah. no, I was like, oh. Uh, actually, now I can't bring myself to say Jimmy No Name, how dare you? <laughs> Please you find someone who up their pledge. <laughs> wait, what? sorry, what, Bryce? Please find someone who up their pledge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This one is so beloved. I feel like we can get away with it. Let, no. Uh, uh, no. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Thank goodness. Oh. I. I, I just found another pledge. Somebody upped their pledge. Up yours. To half of a day at the blue lot. Oh, good God. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Probably, Probably soup. soup. Probably, Probably soup. soup. Ice cream soup, soup is a type of soup. soup. Probably. 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 Probably, probably, probably problematically. No, it's 2019 after all. <laughs> it's problematically soup. Uh, thank you very much, probably soup. I bet you alley soup is problematically soup. <laughs> alley soup is problematic, man. Uh, yeah. I'm splashing money on your face. Yeah, or the concrete. In the blue lot. God damn it. Well, that's a quest. Um, uh... <laughs> Hey, man, you have a one-minute story that you could tell so we could go full on Twitch streamer and shout out everybody who subscribes right now for the next one minute. So I'm on the jet. God damn it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The man in front of me says, Renegu, and I say, well, uh, that might be something in a foreign language. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Aisle or window? Oh, wait. The aisle seats were window seats. Were windows. Yeah, because it's a yeah, and, then, yeah. and I got there ace hastily. Yes, you got there very, very quickly. And your man, Jeff Wan, probably moved his seat over and said, why don't you take it? Because there's so many free drinks I'm You're having. absolutely right, Brian. And when I sat down in my seat, I knew, yosh, punker, I said to myself, I'm not some scamp. Like codes from home, like my mother told me in an old wives' tale about the blue lot. Uh, well, I mean, so the captain's up there. He's what, like spin dashing 12 or something? Uh, sure, sure. He's having himself a big old time. Like Big Jim 5. <laughs> big know? Jim 5. Just, yeah, uh, uh, just a that's, big that's a normal Jim thing 5 of them all lined up, elbow to elbow. So, uh, all right. Look, you're all assholes. Uh, just Some sand oh, nine four. Sorry, I, I I don't know. I'm I'm not in this scene. You guys are in your fucking <laughs> private jet, and you have all these people throwing money in your face. I don't know. Uh, hey, thank you very much to everybody who uh, uh, donated. By the way, Bryce, who's the bit boss at this moment? Our current. Oh wait, hold on. Where's my thing? Where's my thing? The current. Always well the bit boss. The current bit boss is Big Jim Five with eleven 1, hundred bits. Thank you, Big Jim. Oh. Oh, I like God him more damn. than Bio I don't know what that means, but that sounds great. It is. Yeah. It is great. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Bryce, Hi. we're just a couple uh, guys on a couch. What's going on? Well, we do have a quiz if you'd like to play a little quiz and kind of bring, yeah. bring the mood up a little bit. We got a quiz here from uh, Cole W. who wrote, We know Brian has a dog and Jury has a bird, but has either of them owned a fish? We were chatting in my office today about how the local Wegmans is looking for a sushi chef, but in order to qualify, you need an extensive knowledge of fish. So it got us thinking, is this a fish? Since fish have not so common names. So what Cole has done is he's got us a list here of the common names of fish. And all you have to do is tell me if they are real or fake fish. So this is real or fake. 
fish are name. We, are, are, we, are we playing Easy. against the game here? I, I think or? we're playing all against the all game. All against yeah, the we're game. On a team. Yeah, we'll play all we're, against we're, the we're, game. We're about to school these fish. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, shit. Are we getting a sequel? Goddamn right. Goddamn right. Hey, what kind of fish we got, Brian? Uh, oh, we got fish dicks. <laughs> fish bitch. Uh, fish... <laughs> Bitch, bitch. <laughs> that's a that's a problematic word. I apologize <laughs> to my future daughters. Problematic <laughs> C's. <laughs> problematic C words. D's nuts. Uh, <laughs> problematic D's. Problematic, problematic D's. Uh, the seven D's. <laughs> so yeah. So seven problematic nuts. E's. The E's are for eels. So it yeah, is no. who, are, who are who are not fish. Who are saying an old Andrew Dice Clay routine <laughs> <All right>. problematically. <laughs> So it's worth noting we're talking about common fish names, not necessarily proper species names. For example, uh, if we gave you Antarctic cod, that would be a fish, even though it's not the Antarctic toothfish or the Dysosticus mausoni. So yeah. we're looking at common so, names. I, mean, I, mean, I want a piece of that uh, uh, Antarctic cod. I want an Antarctic cod piece. Yeah. It's just a frozen crotch. I'm just going to leave that. Just uh, my like crotch a... is frozen. It's black and blue and frostbitten and gonna fall off. <laughs> hey, oh baby, it's it's an Antarctic cod. Oh, yeah. it's supposed Jeez, to be is great. Some, is it tartar sauce? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Why does that smell like the Bering Sea and regret? <laughs> All right. So it's uh, you guys against the game here. We're gonna go into our first round. Your first fish name: spoonfish. The spoonfish. I am almost certain this is a real one. Spoonfish, <laughs> come together in your school. Spoonfish, swim on. Uh, don't go that way. You're a fool. Spoonfish. Spoonfish. <laughs> You're welcome, Cogsman. <laughs> Hold on, when I, when I would explain the spoonfish. Do you want to go further with spoonfish? Well, well, I'd be like, 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 what, what, what is it about the spoonfish that really, really sets him apart? Yeah, uh, spoon oh, wearing. Oh, here we go. Oh. Spoonfish, surrounded by all them forkfish. Spoonfish, <laughs> don't feel bad. You're quite a dish. Spoonfish, don't get knifed. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Uh, real, real fish. Real fish. Real fish. You think real? Yeah. Andrew, what do you think? Yeah, it sounds like a bait fish or something. You should probably sounds talk like a bait fish. <laughs> fish. Uh, Quit uh, jerking off in the sea. <laughs> bait fish. Oh, it's the other. Yeah, Shooting your fish. seed all over me. It's a sea man. <laughs> Get them all out. Get them all out now. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that bait fish became a sea man. <laughs> Crossbreeding. I'm a sea fish spoon man. <laughs> all right. Uh, real. real. Here we go. Real. 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 All right. The, gym, the boys are saying real. The spoon fish is totally fake. Oh, uh, it's real now. I mean, how do you explain that number one hit single, Spoonfish? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> by, by by someone, somebody, somebody, I swear to God, we're not friends, chat room. If, you, if somebody does not Photoshop a tide around the waist flannel onto a fish and tweets it to me, I'm Justin R. Young. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it my fucking icon. I don't mind icon. stealing fish from the spoon bin of decadence. I was a real song and a real fish. I'm swimming hungry. I'm swimming, I'm swimming hungry. hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is one of the nice things when we're in the same room. Like you don't have to, you don't have to be the second voice as well. No, <laughs> because, because I'm here for you. <laughs> That's it. We, we don't have to worry about ducking. No, which is not a real animal. or swimming, like the fish. <laughs> All right. So okay. one for one, we're great. You're zero for one, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. Number two. Uh, yeah, agree not to from where we're looking. Agree to disagree. All right. Round two. I'm under the sea, everything's opposite. Yeah, yeah, we're we're down under. So we're playing opposite rule. I, uh, what well, are you, spoonfish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 what are you trying to spearfish us? All right, let's go into round two. The yellowfish cyclops. Uh, uh, question. Yeah. Okay. 
Is there, this is maybe a weird things question. Is there a single animal that has an odd number of eyeballs reliably? Like, like. There, there are some animals <sighs> that have like a third thing that can be photosensitive to something. Right, uh, because that's usually like a proto eyeball, right? So yeah. you can tell when it's light and dark. And usually that'll be like. On yeah, the you know, and, you know, Nick Fury. You Nick know. Fury, uh, yeah. man, I bet there's a really good story about how he lost that eye. Yeah, no, I we'll bet, I bet know. it's real we'll satisfying whenever we we'll hear. We'll never know. Mm. Um, uh, yellowfish cyclops. Oh, excuse me, yellow, yellow yellow fin cyclops. Yellow fin. Yeah, I don't yellow, mind. Wait, wait, yellow on, fin. Ye ye yellow fin or yellow fin. Yellow fin. Yellow fin cyclops. So this might be just like because he said common name, right? So it just might be like like the eyes are like just really, like really close together. So. Like 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 it's a folk saying thing that it's yeah, like uh, you know you and your pals are tossing back a few Hold and on. they said, "Where's that yellow fin cyclops?" And oh. not all fish also have bilateral symmetry. Some of them have sort of like that off you know swim kind of. Here's what I think it is. What I think I think there's two ends in fin. I think it's finish. I think it's a coward. And I think it lost an eye in a battle. <laughs> With a swordfish. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, there they. They got a, scooped out by. Yeah, uh, see, I've a yellowfin cyclops. How'd you lose the eye? Spoonfish. <laughs> <laughs> spoonfish came yeah, right you know up. I, I'm uh, saying none of the. Scoop I, my other eye right I'll out. tell them about it. They said no such thing. <laughs> you know, when I lived in Norway, uh, there was a. Uh, linguistic habit that a lot of people had. They, they'd say "basagu," was, which is uh, that's good. Uh, and that then, when you would ask a question, they would say yes. Oftentimes, people would go. You know, they would inhale as they said "ya," yeah. so they, they'd go, <gasps> you know, like that. And um, uh, the joke was, "Why are there no flies in Norway?" And then you go, "Why?" And then you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> "Can't wait to come back to Norway." <laughs> I, love, I love, I love it. Uh, Speaking right. of places that eat fish, <laughs> so uh, we are looking for an think? answer real? on yellow fin Camp. cyclops. Camp. No, no, can't be real. Uh, I say real. real. I say real. Okay. I'm thinking All real. right, I'll back your play. Real is rain. We're going with real. Well, gentlemen, while the yellow fin tuna is real, the yellow fin cyclops is not. I was on a podcast <laughs> and my co-host got it wrong, but I back the play. I like that we're like it's. I back the play. <laughs> I back the play. I back the play earlier in the first question. I like that it sounded so stupid. Like I guess that will be a fish name. And no. I said out loud, it's weird to have an odd number of eyeballs. Offered another solution, another solution, yeah! <laughs> now we're losing the game. We were losing the game of <laughs> all. All right, all right. Yeah, we, we'll come back. Maybe the ducking is good. We, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be gold, man. All right, round three. Slime head. <laughs> one of these has to be real. Yeah, this one is totally real. Yeah, slime, slime head, head real. Slime head from, fish from Ghostbusters. Uh, slime head. <laughs> slime head. What do you think of slime head? Remember when they had Lady Slime Head in the new Ghostbusters? <laughs> yeah. Wait, did they? Answer the call. It's oh called Answer God. the Call. I haven't, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? No. Well, I bet you you've always wondered, what if there was a Lady Slime Head? <laughs> well, that's. I mean, don't worry, you get to see it. Okay. Um. Oh boy. Uh, we'll slime real. head. Real. We're saying real? Yeah, we're sliming it. Gentlemen, slime head is real. We're the best at That's this. Right. We're yeah. the best at this. Also known I'll tell you, you want to know what? We're swimming upstream. Yeah, but I feel like we're going to breach right after this one. We're going <laughs> to get back to 500. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. I feel like we tossed a commercial. And that was and for triple like... points, by the way. That one was triple points, by the way. <laughs> I feel like we're about to we're toss playing a by slime head rules. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a, 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 a whatever. We, a, a, we the moment's gone. All right, ready. <laughs> All right, ready. here we go. Round four. Uh... Crocodile shark. Oh, that's got to be real. Crocodile shark. There's like there's like a crockfish, but it's not a crocodile shark. I mean, I mean there, there's a whale shark. 
So there's so there's is there every species of shark? Is there an orangutan a shark, Brian? Shark? Yeah, th- yeah. Th- there's an Aaron's Ze- Museum. Yeah, is there a mouse shark? There's a unicorn shark. An elephant shark? There's there's a shark of my heart. Meerkat shark? You're to blame. <laughs> Meerkat shark. Card shark? Card shark. <laughs> there's gar. Did there's I tell you the story of how I was almost on card shark? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. all right. It's fine. You see, they're bringing card sharks back. Right? You had your innermost vulnerability. Yeah. All right. this, <laughs> no. The most emotional of days. <laughs> Brian turned to me with a veracity on card shark. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's a whole story. Uh, oh, yeah, man, uh, I want to back Andrew's play on this one. I'm going to say not real. I think not real, yeah. yeah. You're going to go with not real. Not real. All right, gentlemen, your answer is... Incorrect. <gasps> the crocodile shark, also known as Pseudocarcarius camoharai, is a species of mackerel shark. It, okay, so I saw on Andrew's face an expression that I can only express to the audio listeners as suppressed desire to discuss semantics <laughs> with the judge <laughs> of this game. Uh, well, yeah, I'm I- going to unleash. Pulls up. The <laughs> Bryce, pulls Bryce, go. Yeah, we were asked about an alligator shark. Nope. Crocodile. No. Croc- oh, yeah, see, I'm an idiot. I, you got to listen. No you got to listen. Actually, I should have backed your play. We could have convinced him. We could have hypnotized him. I would have. Yeah, I, I'm getting old and don't pay attention. All right. All right. Three to one. All right. Look, we got this. We got this. Yeah. All right, three to one. All right. all right. Next round. Bat Ray. Bat Ray. Like a manta ray. There should be. Bat. A bat ray. I mean, okay, first of all, I don't know if there's a species called a bat ray, but you can't have that many manta rays without one of them putting on a cowl and fighting some crime. Exactly. I, I uh, guarantee you I always there's just wondered, one bat ray out why, there. Why does bat ray fight crime? Did his parents die? <laughs> if only they would have I 17 movies. I would just really movies. kind of feel like they'd show whether or not bat ray's parents died. Yeah. I'm going to say... Bat Ray's real. I feel like we're this actually, actually the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait this is a group effort, gentlemen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, wait, Justin, 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 Justin. What? Ask me if Bat Ray is real. Brian, is Bat Ray real? No, 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 it's not. No? Come on, come on. That wasn't bad. That's I don't know why. I, 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 I don't know why I decided of all shows that I wanted to just do a full just like leave Jim up. from the office, like turn to the camera. Uh, wait. All right. So you're saying no? So now we're doing saying no? I was so disgusted by your joke that I forgot that I agreed with you. Bat Ray. That's okay. So you know what? Uh. I, I've said both, so whatever you guys go with, I get to claim no, to be right. No, come on. Right, <laughs> get back on the same page. Uh, in, your, in your heart of hearts. In my heart of hearts, it's probably right, but we just had crocodile fish. And that was real. real. So I, I want to say it's not real. Andrew? I, I'm i not good at this. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so you're recusing yourself? Oh, battery sounds cool to me. I mean, it does sound cool, but I'm going to say that, that... My problem with Crocodile, like, we need two scary things. <laughs> you know, we need two scary things. Yeah. I'm I mean, I did. Real? I did swim with a tiger shark. I think, so. You did. Yeah, you did. Can't Wait, you can you talk me. about that? <laughs> uh, I, well, I did. I won't say what it was for. <laughs> sure. All right. He can talk about the fact that he swam with a tiger shark. Okay. But it's like uh, like you said it, and I said, no, 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 no. You know, like Real or fake? <laughs> fake? Fake. 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 Your answer of fake is... You're fired. Get out of here. Oh, the bat ray, a.k.a. Miliobatis californica, is an eagle ray found on the east, eastern Pacific. That is right. Hey, hold on. The bat ray is an eagle ray? That's uh, right. We, uh, what's next? <laughs> uh, which is also a mind ray? Break up the rays. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we, we, too we, many there's rays. There's too many different rays. Also, we met Ray Anderson. He was downstairs. <laughs> I, I was right this once. <laughs> you so, were. You were. This once I was right. Nobody had my back. <sighs> Nobody had your back. Okay. Winning. All right. Let's uh let's go. Wait, wait, what'd you say? I don't I, I don't think you're ready. Oh no, I'm covering over. We had a little bit of Skype issues. Uh can you hear me okay. now for round six? Yes, yeah. we can. Oh, all right, God, here we go. Games for years. Jack Dempsey. <laughs> Jack Dempsey, of course, the famous boxer, right? I mean Dempsey? Jack's a fish. 
cut jack no, I, it's too weird it's yeah. too weird to be fake it's got to be real it, 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 two it's reels like, in a row okay yes but like if he can came we in, reel this one in <laughs> okay yeah you know what i'm gonna look at you and laugh at your joke and support <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> and now we have concrete proof on who's a better person <laughs> i mean like if, if there was a fish like the chef boyardee is it real and you're like well it has to be because that's so out of left field well, we played that before a couple times like the cyclops thing and we, we even you know Went against what we knew about conventional bilateral symmetry. Yeah, and said, you but, know. but 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 Jack Dempsey, I I I, I, I I'm a hundred percent. I I think I think it's got it's a fish with a messed up nose to resemble the boxer's broken nose. Is Jack Dempsey a boxer? I'm, I'm looking at our sports expert. Cauliflower here. ears. Jack Dorsey. Nipsey Russell. It was not. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, uh R.I.P. Uh, Nipsey Hustle. <laughs> Hustle. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I meant Russell, the comedian. I know. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Uh, real. Real. We're going with real. All right, gentlemen. Your answer is real. Fucked up nose. We're <laughs> doubling down. We get bonus. Just, just we're betting the insurance that we get fucked up nose. Cauliflower here, also, too. Uh, also, cauliflower. We we're betting another one on cauliflower here. We get points for all this if it comes through. Owes money to the mob. Owes money to the mob. We, 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 we've, been, yeah. we've been in Vegas too long. We're trying to do Vegas uh, crap yeah, spread yeah. on everything. Yeah. Also, uh, 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 it was undefeated through 1926. <laughs> Depression era hero. I'm Depression losing era hero. Here, We're betting on that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So fucked up nose, cauliflower <laughs> ear, undefeated through 1926, and a depression era hero. Oh, we got it. We're gonna come back. It's like five way. to one on that, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, uh, your answer of real is. Show us that fish. The Jack That's Dempsey. A nose. AK That's a cauliflower ear. <laughs> Wikipedia says he was undefeated through 1926, <laughs> and he is a Depression Era hero. Oh my <laughs> fucking god! We're up 300. Wait, wait, go, well, go back, so, go back to the description. So yeah, so okay. the Jack it Dempsey refers to its okay. aggressive nature and strong facial features, liking to that of the famous 1920s boxer Jack yes! Dempsey. Oh! <laughs> Oh, I'll give wow. you official score 370. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, we have to. We're we're going live to to the official scorekeeper, the Jack uh, the Jack Dempsey of of human beings, <laughs> Bryce Castillo. <laughs> I'm gonna, defeated. I'm gonna give you two points for that. You, it does. It was named after him because it kind of looked like him, but I don't see anything about a cauliflower ear on this fish. So I'm gonna give you two points. Mm, okay, fair enough. Messed up ear. Fish That's don't it. have yeah, ears exactly. on the outside. Well, actually, yeah, guys, yeah. guys, be cool. Be cool. Go back to your corners. We got this. We got this. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do a uh, round. What is it? Seven. Round seven. You ready for round seven? Yeah. Yeah. All right. How many points? For one point. Uh, the. Big Mouth Buffalo. Big Mouth Buffalo. Buffalo! So they tricked us before because we knew there's yellowfin tuna, but we're like yellowfin cycle. So like, there's a big mouth bass. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you get there's to use big, big mouth? Billy bass. Do, Billy bass, yeah. Do you get to use big mouth more than once? Do Don't like, worry, be happy. That's what he's saying to me. Big mouth buffalo. I don't know. That that does sound it's like they're trying to trick mighty derivative, mighty derivative. Like they're, like they're, they're, they're trying to seduce us. I think they're us. trying to fuck on us. They're trying to rub a little buffalo sauce on this exactly. and getting us all tricked Although up. Although it on does it. sound a little like I don't know. Can people fish in North Dakota? <laughs> Is there any fishing? One day the guy without a buffalo fish was fishing in North Dakota. Yeah, North Dakota. Uh, the, uh, that's, like that might be that's some, where Fargo is. That, there's a river. Shit, where like people like fish, like well, that's a big mouth buffalo. No, 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 no. no. Ain't no, ain't no buffalo. Well, when I like to crack open a nice cold Coors Light, I like to look at my big mouth buffalo that I've owned as a pet for over 50 years. I trained him to walk, and one time he ran for mayor. <laughs> and then we both crack a Coors at the exact same time. Uh, him with his fishy little scaly fin. Uh, and then we drink it all, and it's uncomfortably long. <laughs> Sometimes I try to mate with the shiny tall. <laughs> he's like, and you I... watch the beer go out of the gills. You're like, that's a waste. <laughs> yeah. And then I look dead in the camera and say, it's pretty fucking hot. How about let's maybe a little golden shower? No, no. Super Bowl ad. All right. It blocks out three minutes. Dilly dilly. <laughs> the side like Buzz Bud Wise. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, not real. Not, <laughs> not real. Not real. We're gonna go. Possum with... poison. That's what it is. You're gonna go with not real. 
All right, gentlemen. The Big Mouth Buffalo, a.k.a. Gordhead, a.k.a. Red Mouth Buffalo, a.k.a. Buffalo Fish, a.k.a. Bernard Buffalo, Roundhead, or Brown Buffalo is very real. Also, where, where is it? Where do they? Because we distributed get from the Red North River Dakota. of the North, North Dakota in Manitoba, Red Canada, Red and oh, North wow. Dakota. <laughs> we get a point. We get a point. No, you Dakota. you lose a point. You lose two points for that one. Oh no! No, guys, we better hope this last one's for a lot of points. <laughs> Otherwise, we're really fucked. You know, Fuck. your theory was really good. It, it was, was really, really good. good. That's right. You're playing. Uh, right. We're like stupid, who would name that? And you had a really good compelling theory, and then we're like, no. Mm-hmm. I do uh, want to drink Coors Light, though. <laughs> well, I mean, if it helps, uh, Coors bought Miller. So oh, that's, shit. Uh, that's Miller Coors. Uh, uh, watch the documentary Beer Wars. It's great. Oh, really? Yeah. I love about this uh, Miller Light yeah, he's, corn he's, syrup. Uh, yeah. A lot okay. of these non hold, hold corn on. syrup <laughs> assholes are out here hoity toity, pulling their pants up, acting like they're too good for corn syrup. Hey man, I don't want you working for big uh, for big uh, budge. Big bud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're gonna go to our final round here. It is three to six. Uh, thankfully, this final round is worth four points. So we can lose this one because we're that far ahead. Well, uh, no, <laughs> close. <laughs> almost, uh, almost. Uh, well, this one's worth four points, gentlemen. I would like you to you to tell me if this is real or fake, and this is going to be Wobby Gong. Uh, spell it. W o b b e g o n g. Wobby Gong. Use it in a sentence. No. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, replace one word in a popular song lyric. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh. 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 Here we go. Uh. Oh. 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 I got it. I got it. I. I got this. I got this. I got this. Um. Oh shit! How does that song go? How does the old town road song go? Fuck. Uh. Uh. uh I'm gonna take my wobby gong and ride till I can't no more. Okay, all right. It took me way too long to pull that. I love it. You left out the name of the song. (laughs) You left out the one lyric that's the name of the song. I'm going to take my Wobby Gong down the old town road. Oh, fuck. I feel like Wobby Gong, I ordered that at Outback Steakhouse as an appetizer. Like the Wobby Gong. Oh, yeah, Yeah. no. Yeah. Come on down to the Wobby. Like, get the Wobby Gong. Shrimp, you know. (laughs) It's like a... Oh, we Australians have an idea. It's a little imperfection that makes it perfect. It's a wobby gong. <laughs> That's where we Googly take... do. We, we, we slice we... one of your shrimps right in its face. Oh, I see this shrimp. So is... you value the preciousness of human life. Yeah. And the blooming onion. <laughs> this onion is perfectly symmetrical, so I rub my dick on it. That's a little wobby gong for you. That's what makes it just right. Not a few later, though, Pexicos. Because... Although there is a gigantic sign... Literally right <laughs> there. The right there's in a big empty lot. It was like, for, for, it forgot to forgot to pay off the mob. Apparently it burned down years ago. That's forgot amazing. to pay off the mob, and now there's yeah. just a sign. They, they, they forgot to buy insurance because yeah. it, it'd be a real shame if this outback went wobby gone. <laughs> yeah, you'd be wobby gone. Oh, you mean the fish wobby-gone. in Lake Mead? <laughs> no rules, just no restaurant. <laughs> No uh, rules. Just write your share. I mean, that's not like begging him for help. Cause your wobby gone's gone. <laughs> it does sound like an Australian fish. Yeah. Wobby gong? Yeah. yeah. Sure, no, I, I think it is. I bet it's, you they say it different, though. <laughs> all right, man. Is there a pill you take for the wobby gong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm going all in. I'm going to say yes, and it's probably Australian. And it's Australian. Yeah. All right, we got to put our a lot of side bets on this one because we got to make up some points. Uh, okay, so it it's Australian. It's our, just for the uh, record, it is already worth four points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But we can get extra action though. Yeah, yeah. like one of us. We're in Vegas, Bryce. We'll explain. All right, what are your what are your side bets? Give me your side bets. So we, outside of just Bobby Gong, real or brought real. their one dollar money bag. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'm getting on a private jet right now. <laughs> I saved all that money so I could bet it with you dad uh no it, yes and it's australian that's my final answer all right uh Can i you... i also agree and let's go with it yes okay so your answers are that it is real and as a side bet it is from australia yep gentlemen we have or an... wants to go to australia or it's a direct-to-consumer glasses subscription service or it once purchased ruse brand tennis shoes 
Yeah, or very, the subsidiary of Alibaba. Or Doug Crocodile Dundee. Or they might wobble, but they don't fall down. Yeah. Climbs out of the lake at night and steals your babies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen, we have a we have an outcome of this game. All those side bets count. Yeah. All the side bets count? Yeah. Oh. Also, it made a very popular YouTube video about the uh, uh, popular drama Bikey Wars. All right. Uh, I have to figure out how to fucking do this math. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like we got some of those right. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Get ready for the j -j 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 jackpot! I'm going to say with the score of... Uh, uh, 7, 11, 15, 19. Doing Welcome math. to that's Math good, Attack. That's, that's good news. That's With good a news. final score of 19 to 18. Bam. Yay. Yay. That's all there is to it. The Wabi Gong, given, and common name given to 12 species of carpet sharps, is in the family Orectolobidae. Let me get to it! Get to the punchline! Yes, it is chiefly around Australia and Indonesia, possibly named uh, 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 from the Australian Aboriginal language, meaning shaggy beard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, you said know, that too, I think. You know I what? was looking at his beard. Uh, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I have a very shaggy beard. And, I, I, I'm realizing uh, Andrew's just now, Aboriginal. Like, they don't even have access to YouTube. I don't know how they would have made a popular video. That was right. really, I was, I was way off on actually, that. One. I, actually, that was yeah. one of the ones and, oh, that I gave uh, you. Bryce? That was uh, one of the ones yeah, that I did give you. Point to yourself if, oh. if, they, uh, if you can take one down to the Old Town Road and ride until you can't no more. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> So I won't take that point, but yeah. you uh, know what? Uh, just give yourself the dealer. Chip the dealer. Yeah, the dealer. Yeah. Give, give the yourself dealer. a point. Uh, uh, buy yourself something nice. Huh? You are I just, like twice just for the record. Like, you are you, you are tipping yourself to losing this game. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Thank you once again to Cold W for sending in this game. If you have a, a if you have a game that you would like us to play here, send it to mail m a i l at nightattack.tv. If we use your game on the uh, on the show, we will send you a free sticker pack. Yeah, let's do a little bit of Diamond Time. Let's uh, yes, Diamond Time is where you can shout out your project right here on the show. Just head on over to reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit.com. There's a big old post sticky to the top, and you can shout out your project. Top three get read, including Will Harris, 1982. What's up, Diamond Club? It's me, the OG Brito, Will Harris. My new podcast listening app, Entail, is up for a Webby Award, and we need your help to win. Show your boys some DZ love by voting for Entail in the Webby Awards. It'll take 30 seconds of your life and will earn you my eternal gratitude and possibly a free beer when I see you. Please head on over to YOLO420.com slash Webby Swag, W-E-B-B-Y-S-W-A-G. Cheers, mates! All right, let me tell you two facts that are totally true. If... The Entail app was a huge stinking pile of garbage. We'd still vote it the hell up because we yep. take care of our own. Good news. It is not that. It is freaking rad and awesome beyond words. It takes all of your podcasts, allows you to separate it bit by bit, gives you visual elements so that you can be more interactive and get right to the good parts. You ever want to share something from a podcast? Are you like, oh, what's the no? There's that one section where they were talking about the ah, this is Entail was built for you, man. It's amazing. Uh, and also. Yeah. yeah, it's Will. I mean, I'm just saying. It's the OG Brito. Like, I actually wound up rewatching because I was submitting uh, Night Attack to a comedy festival. So yeah. I was finding a bunch of other like live performances to show that were great. I got the text thread. Uh, you, you two, you were up late. He was in England. I had no excuse because it was definitely the middle of the fucking night when the two of you were creaming your jeans over how great the original improv uh, Nug songs was. I mean, all I'm saying is that uh, uh, behind the scenes. Will was in no position to be in behind a mic, and that entire thing played out like Let's poetry. Let's say, hypothetically, you said, man, I want you to show up at the show on about one unit of wackiness. Uh, yes. Here's, in fact, it's a common mistake to do more than one unit of wackiness. Well, or, or just to get in the headspace of more yeah. than one unit of wackiness. A lot of people, like, they try to get wacky, they get a little wacky, and then they're like, I'm not feeling wacky enough. So then they just eat the whole bar of wacky. Yeah. yeah. And then they show up really wacky. Really wacky. <laughs> like so wacky they can barely talk. And then out of the ashes rises the phoenix of the Nug song, uh, uh, Will. Oh, my God. It was amazing. Five stars. <laughs>
Five stars. <laughs> Highly recommend. And just because we already threw uh, uh, our hat over the wall on that story, you all need to make sure that this app wins a fucking Webby. Uh, uh, Ayasir says, hey, Diamond Club, both my roommates were recently laid off and they decided to make the best of it and try that streaming thing they always wanted to do. Please hop on it over, show some support as they love to see and interact with their chat. YOLO420.com slash unemployed swag. What, what's, the, what's the name of this channel? It looks like a Twitch thing. This is, yeah, this is B Button Warriors. All one word, B Button Warriors on Twitch. Yeah, I Sweet. like I like bees and butts and warriors. And Renegu writes, hello, Diamond Club. Ever since I got into the beta for Twitch Sings, a karaoke game, I've been doing karaoke streams before joining W. Scottis One's game night. People seem to like it, although better entertainment should be available. So to hopefully make the leap to affiliate soon, I decided to make an event out of next Friday's stream. I will be singing the complete Queen Live Aid set during oh my, my stream God. starting at Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time or one hour before night, uh, Diamond Club game night on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash redigoo or yolo420.com slash hearing loss. Please bring your own hearing protection. Uh, protection. P.S. Bryce, we need your angelic voice on Twitch Sings. P.P.S. Justin, we need your characters back on Twitch Sings as well. Uh... Twitch Sings rules, and everybody should be a part of it. And I heard a whisper in the wind that uh, maybe Twitch Sings might be available to everybody very soon. Mm. 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 Well, that wind, uh, that wind, it whispers. Uh, I, 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 I assume that means only people who are currently winning the summer movie draft. Oh, yeah, here we go, the Summer Movie Draft. Welcome to Movie Draft Minute, presented by CosmicRadio.tv for the week of April 8th, 2019. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. All right, what can I do for the banter theme this year? I've done movie taglines, done movie quotes. Have I done game quotes yet? Yeah, probably. Anyways, I'll figure it out next week. Till then, let's go check the rankings. Team Frog Pants and Team Sword and Laser are both tied for fifth place. Still waiting for their first film. Team Hammerson is in fourth place, $6.5 million. Team Grant, the beerist, is in third place, $153.3 million. Team Nitac is in second place. The Shazam bring in $59.8 million a week. And Pet Cemetery bring in $26 million a week for their total to $163.1 million. And in first place with $374.7 million, it's Team John Trekker. And that is your Movie Drive Minute for the week of April 8th, 2019. Did you see the Shazam? Uh, I have not, but Andrew loved it. Did you love it? I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, I, my hot take is I'm very glad that to have a Captain Marvel movie that I like very much. <laughs> yeah, e even if only to watch them very carefully dance around and yet never say the name of the main character the entire movie long. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought it was very, it was delightful, very much, very, very fun, and full of surprises too. Yeah, uh, there's uh, since we're doing non spoilery talk, uh, there's a uh, a great magic trick is something that is revealed and you realize it was in front of you the entire mm -hmm. time. It's mm -hmm. very difficult to pull those off. This movie does so in the most delightful way. I was grinning ear to ear. It was great. Yeah, yeah. I thought a lot of characters, every character had depth, every character, and, and one of our criticisms of some other movie, which I'm not going to mention, is you can't define anything about that person. In this one, there are fifth-string characters that you could say, this is their trait, this is what they are. If I had to write them, you'd understand who this person was in the scene. Also, I, I don't think this is a spoiler, but the entire movie long, it's a lot more fun to imagine that they're on purpose making Jeff Bezos the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> because it fits and it works the entire I way through. Don't <laughs> not just baldest, Brian. Not just baldest <laughs> and richest yeah. and uh, 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 whitest. <laughs> well, that's what's funny. The guy that played, I mean, I said the, uh, there's a father figure on here that was also a father figure on Smallville. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Looks super stat too. That's true. Yeah, he's got a yeah, stuff. Been on the nose of super all that. Yeah. Uh, Highly recommended. I, yeah. I I really enjoyed Sinbad. It is um, Sinbad. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, somebody was making the uh, uh, the Mand Mandela effect uh, yeah. uh, thing. Um, although I am a big fan of Sinbad. Just yeah. Uh, hey, by the way, big too. shout out to Sinbad. <laughs> we want to just clip that and send it to Sinbad if he's on social media. We just want a big shout out to Sinbad. Oh. 
What if there was no Shazam movie? Uh, God damn <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was sitting back there. Oh, wait, are you following him? Did we do this before? <laughs> Motherfuckers. Uh, yeah, no, uh, everybody go see Sim. <laughs> he's going to be a, a, see a, Sinbad, on the, on yeah. the strip. Uh, uh, Bryce, can you look up Sinbad's dates if he's got dates coming up? Let's also plug Sinbad. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, He's oh got yeah, a whole, he's got a whole tour. What are the dates here? That's right. He's coming to Greensboro, North Carolina next on the 19th. Rally, North Carolina, 420 in St. Enix, California. Yeah, this, this is definitely what I intended to use our full attention bandwidth to promote. Yeah, yeah. Raleigh, Raleigh, 420. Hit up Raleigh. Rally at Raleigh. Lit. Come on. <laughs> oh, you guys want to do some email? Uh, yeah, let's do some email. Let's do some email. Join us for drinks in the Diamond Club. In the Diamond Club. Sounds grand. Sounds really, really grand. All right. We got some letters here. These are your letters to mail at nightattack.tv, M-A-I-L at nightattack.tv. We got a letter from Sign. Sign says, sup, y'all. You all know me, and most of you know that Brian totally brought me into the magic world. While I think I have a good thumb of what I think of myself, what do you guys think about creating a character? I see so many people learning tricks, but barely anyone using them to tell a story about themselves. Brian, what did you do with the information from... Uh, your your uh, 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 letter to tell her, your famous letter to tell her. Uh, jury, have you played with performing a character? And what did you learn from talking to so many big name workers? Thank you for your responses and making the best magic show on Twitch. Kai Sign, Brian's Ill illegitimately legitimate black son. Character uh, work. Wow. They, I mean, this is this is this is a big one because it's something that I believe very strongly in from from my position kind of outside of magic is uh, I tend to believe that character is so much more important than uh, the the uh, technic the, the 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 technician elements of magic. And uh, if you spent more time building a character uh, and less time figuring out the subtleties on the subtleties of the subtleties, I think you would wind up having a bigger career. To me, in magic, the sign of a good character is could they show up on a popular television show? Like if they just walk through the door, would how would they interact with everybody else that you know all the characters they walked in uh you know with friends or something like how would they interact with joey how would they interact with monica how would they interact with chandler if you know that if you can get that in your head then you have a good character if you don't and you're like oh i don't know you'd show them a card trick then you don't and and i think that that's that that is huge that uh that's a, a nice nod to one of the tests in the uh, uh, the Phantom Menace review from Red Letter Media. He gives the challenge to his friends of saying, describe these characters without saying what they do or what they look like. Yeah. And of course, Han Solo, like, oh, he's roguish. He's a thief with the heart of gold. You know, and then meanwhile, Qui-Gon Jinn is like, he's stoic. Stern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so, so that's certainly important for establishing what your character is when you know who they are it's obvious what they would and would not do to find out who that character is uh i'm a big fan of figure out what you hate write down it's hard to write down 10 things you you like to be or respect or whatever write 10 things that you would never be caught dead doing being having or saying and then figure out like okay now those are the lines on the outside what's left in the middle and figure out the center point there and try to create a character that is those things once you have that everything else writes itself what's that you andrew yeah, I think, you know, there's a difference in character and caricature. And and one of the problems sometimes in magic is people will decide, they're I'm going to do an act. I'm going to be a nutty professor. Well, great. That's 12 minutes. That's going to be, if you just want to do 12 minute act the rest of your life, that's fine. But that's not somebody I want to spend two hours with. And I think the thing you have to figure out is character is the best parts, the most interesting parts of your personality amplified. And it can be hard to figure that out. But you know, what makes Penn and Teller Penn and Teller? What makes David Copperfield David Copperfield? What makes, you know, an, an exercise I would tell magicians to do is imagine, take a standard trick out of the magic shop, look at it, and how would they do this trick? What would be their take on it? And that's where the personality comes through. That's where the take comes, you know, comes out. I, and that was something I got to live for many, many years where it's like uh, realizing I didn't want to accidentally come up with uh, material or use other people's material. So I would find, you know, catalogs from the 1920s and read a, a trick, uh, uh, grab a gentleman's cummerbund and tie it thusly, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I was like, okay, that's all dumb. But the idea, what do we have here? We have a thing that gets tied up. We have two people grabbing a thing. And then it's like, great. Now that I have MacGuffins in place of real objects, now I'm at a bar. Let me actually visually scan around. It's like, oh, you you could grab two trash bags out of the, the trash bag and tie them together and do X, Y, or Z. Um, 
there was uh, oh dog on I had a second thing. Well, I was at, you know for when I did the show in A and E, what they what we did was we took the fact that I like to I like to play pranks, but I like to be sincere. Right. And how do you be a very sincere prankster? And so you play with trust, but you never want to hurt somebody so bad that they're angry. And that in that in that, I, that was a show where I could steal somebody's car. And they'd be delighted and they'd hug me. They'd have no idea what was going on. But the idea that then I might lie to them again, but then they'd trust me again. And then I'd lie to them again. They'd trust me again. Well, and, and that works if you have a very, very strong understanding of who the character is and, and what they would and would not do. Um, Bryce, I don't know if, if anything mm -hmm. is public on this, but I remember I think you were at one of the classes that we took at Wizard Academy where we learned about character diamonds, where you learned uh, uh, if you think of a, of a baseball diamond. Uh, sure. This isn't like north, south, east, west, but rather you, you have your kind of primary aspect, like the thing they're mostly known for, then the uh, 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 the secondary, which is the exact opposite, but in a lesser voice, uh, 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 the sideways thing. Ah, yeah, here we go. Primary character trait is your north star. That's the core to your being. The second secondary character trait is the counter star. Then you have the uh, the not so secret sin, the the flaw about you. And then the non-negotiable, like like this, I will never do, I will never cross, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when you apply that, it's a great clarifying thing, and and it makes you realize that like uh, Gladys from Portal, the Terminator uh, from uh, the Terminator series, and like uh, like seven other things are all the exact same character. They all have the exact same. Yeah. Even a uh, uh, death from Meet Joe Black or or mm -hmm. Death Takes a Vacation. It's like somebody they're sinister, but then the, they're also ignorant. And the sideways thing is, you know, they're curious, uh, but then they also will never, you know, there's there's this line that they will not cross. You know, and, and when you're and, and that's great, like writing, but when you're like in a stage performer thing where you want to focus on sort of the positive side of that, too, like you think about like, you know, we were just in the Penn and Teller Theater and these guys took their interests, which were sort of off kilter. Like if you watch their show, their atheism and their skepticism is very much a part of their show in an interesting way. Sometimes people take some aspect of like, oh, I really like, you know, 19th century French literature. Nobody cares. Yeah. Um, you love books. OK, maybe books are a reoccurring theme in your act and literature in the page or something like there. You sort of have to dial into what is, you know, they're, they're you know, Penn and Teller aren't going to go into a big thing about market theory, but they are going to take their broader thing of skepticism. And so you dial it. Sometimes you have to expand a bit, take a thing that you like and go, well, I, I like this comic book. OK. You like pop culture, so your items and your props might be related to that, but also your personality. You know, if you like comic books, then should you be a comic book character? Well, and also it's like, what are you saying about it? Mm -hmm. It's one thing if your character just wears a Superman T-shirt. It's yeah. another thing if you're going to rap and act about it, like, you have to say something about why Superman's cool. Like, mm -hmm. and whether or not you dial it in on, like, this is a, a magic trick about Superman. Like... You can tell a story that you understand from that character and expound it. And again, this is just understanding how the audience is going to react to you, which I think is another huge part about it. Yeah. So, so in, in that regard, I guess the exercise would be picture somebody doing a version of what you want to do, but fucking it up and get mad and write down all the things they're doing wrong. And then that is a pretty good hint at, at where, you know, where you should be the opposite. You know, I'll give you the, it just to, uh, and then I'm like, we talk about like the idea of a comic character. A great character was, remember Unbreakable, Mr. Glass. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And you had a character who had this comic book shop that was obsessed with comic books. And then you saw this character and you had these aspects of his personality and all this sort of stuff. And so he was a real life eccentric who was obsessed with this. And, you know, that's sort of, if you wanted to, you know, take a thing that is an example of taking a thing you love and then how does that manifest itself in the real world? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we did it. We fixed magic. We fixed so, uh, number uh, one magic podcast. Number one. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Uh, by the way, it was, right. it was great to, to to see Matt briefly. And uh, uh, in fact, everybody's downstairs. We should probably go say hello to other people. No. Well, uh, left, if, if, if we have time for one more email. Oh, great. Go. Yes. Uh, we got this one from Papa Sparky. Papa Sparky is pitching us. Uh, a new idea. He says, since hearing of Brian and Bonnie's prom night escapade, this was last week, uh, I can't shake the feeling that a Brian-centric sitcom would work a little too well. In fact, the setup wouldn't be too far off from home improvement. Brian is already the patriarch of a family of five. 
Bonnie and each of the girls have a quick character hook, the artist, the teenager, D&D, being the little one. Instead of tool time, he hosts the modern rogue. Onset injuries are a recurring theme. Jason isn't quite the foil that Al Borland was, but Bryce and Brant can fill that role. Justin could be a twist on Wilson. Instead of the scholarly wisdom from around the world, Jury helps Bri Bri work through his week uh, through the week's problem with an improv bit. And instead but there's of like an awning out front, so it's just the beard. Yeah, it's just the beard. It's just the beard. It's just the bottom of my face. <laughs> and instead of uh, doing cars or remodels or projects, Brian's ongoing projects if, is of course the Seven Acre Schwood. In fact, that could probably be yeah, the show's so title. Uh, it seems like you guys could actually workshop this at least into a parody video. Then again, what do I know? I'm some guy on the internet. D-I-A-F, Miles, a.k.a. Papa Sparky. Thank you, Miles. That is pretty yeah. That's pretty tight. That's a tight pitch. That's a good uh, one. So would that make uh, uh, bartender Trevor your Pamela Anderson? Uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> a little, little, little side piece. Uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, but by the way, I eventually told out of that so first I had to secure permission from Penny to tell that story. So I said, hey, your yeah. mom and I spied on you yeah. in a giant uh, uh, swan. And then she was like, you, you know, yeah, go, go ahead. Nobody cares. Nobody watches your show. And then, uh, and then <laughs> I told her the next day, I told her like that one line that somebody in the chat, and I wish I could remember who said it, said, this is a B plot from a Disney sitcom. Penny lost it. Oh, right. She loved that. Yeah. So, uh, so all right. I think we, there's only one way to end this segment. Oh, uh, what's that? You doing the Tim Allen grunt? <sighs> that's my that's my Tim Allen grunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no. Saw, I saw you know I saw him in person at Arby's. Oh really? <laughs> I'm waiting in line. I look over and it's Tim Allen walk in and go and order is in the Holly in North Hollywood. Is he Tim Allen? Well, he eats at Arby's. How often? Huh? That makes sense. How often know? do you think he gets like gorilla grunting? Uh, I don't know. I was like I was just sort of like you know it's one of the you have to see you live in L.A. Of course, see everybody. Was just oh, I'm here. Tim Allen likes Arby's too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Something in common with the tool, man. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you again for the emails. Mail, M A I L, at nightattack.tv. Send in your emails. We love responding to them here at the end of the program, which is what this is, guys. Hells to the yeah. Hey, thank you so much, Bryce, for helping us through all the tech stuff. We were able to make a, this happen for the, from the road. Thank you to Jet Suite for getting <laughs> these two motherfuckers <laughs> through the skies. In style. Oh, I would like to thank the Blue Lot God for housing it. the car $10 of Brian Brushwood, rate. the Tool Man. <laughs> you can just stop at the Tool. <laughs> <laughs> the Man Tool. <laughs> the Man Tool. Uh, I would like to thank Andrew Main at Andrew Main. Uh, uh, Andrew, uh, what is the, the latest? Oh wait, oh we have an announcement. Andrew Main has been nominated. His Book the naturalist for don't let me fuck up this award. What is it? Thriller award, thriller award finalist. Award. Yeah, so just found uh, out today. Found out when I was waiting at Jet Suite in the in the hangar to go in. So yeah, yes, that was there. We go 2019 International Thriller Writers Award. Uh, uh, that there we go. Best paperback original novel, The Naturalist. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank also, you. more importantly, it is the subject of my mom's book club. That, that means what? <laughs> my mom successfully lobbied for The Naturalist to be the next book. <laughs> Also, thank you uh, to so yeah, uh, so everybody. Go buy Andrew Main books uh, on all of them on again Amazon. and again yeah, and again. Over and over uh, and over. Hey, man, we love you guys. Dying to fire. See you next Tuesday. And our bit boss. Thank you to Bad Weave for the bit boss. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>